things are shaping up at Rock Creek, so let's see what I'm talking about here. Hi, I'm Tom Govichak, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. For years, I kept my model railroad equipment in storage. In fact, up until about 2012, that's where it stayed. Since then, I've been working hard trying to learn everything I could about model railroading. And then I started Tom's Trains and Things, this channel right here. And I'm sharing that experience with you in every video that I do. I'm going to show you how I got all this working on here, and I'm going to start on putting the plaster cloth on there. So we're going to see a little bit of that also. I'm starting this off by marking the base right here. I'm going to put a piece right here with the hot glue gun. I'm just going to mark this. So I know about where to put the glue. And I got Debbie's glue gun because I couldn't find mine. Okay, it's hot. Right. So, I'm just stick this right up here. Like that. That'll give me something to go right here. And then I'll let this dry a little bit. Or cool off a little bit. And then I'll stick it down here. Put some glue right here. And there we have a little bit of a contour. And what I'll do is just put some glue right here on the edge. drop this down and then I could trim this over a little bit later on and it doesn't matter if the glue comes out of there you're gonna be covering it up with scenery anyway well you see this is how we start out right here and then maybe I'll stick another piece across let me see if I'll, I'll need that yeah maybe I'll stick a piece across there so We'll just put a dab on each one of these. Put that across. Yeah, that's much better like that. With the needle nose, I can get it in there a little bit better. So, there we go. That's that. That's the first part of it. And you get the idea. I'm going to do the rest right here. And then I'll have to do what's underneath the camera. What I did was I put a, another piece of wood up there. I gotta, for the backing, I have to paint that before I finish this off. But that little tunnel portal will be right up against it. I have my bridge abutment and the pier glued down. I'm testing out the bridges for fit and the uh, Y turnout at the end. Now on the, the last piece behind the abutment I have to put some uh, cork roadbed down to bring up the turnout and I have to drill a hole in there but as you can see I have the strips let me get over on this side first I have the strips over right over here and I put a strip underneath or right behind there and I'm ready right here to level this out to wherever I want the grade to go. I have all my strips in place right on that side. Back in here I started and I'll continue all the way back. Well it's about time to take a break. I got this far with the uh, strips and I used up all the strips that I already cut so it's about time to cut another box and make me some more strips. So I got all the way down to to there I might hide it with the scenery and so it, it, it might just uh, disappear into the uh, buildings that are above it there's a track right there that's going to be 
uncovered that's not going to be covered up but I'm going to put a wall between that level and the other level the two tracks above that we're gonna have some dinner and then I'll get back to cutting some more strips so I could do framing for this I just got this little piece right here to do yeah I'll cover that up right there I have to you can see I put a little wall right there I'm going to put a little wall on the other side I was letting the glue dry on this I have to fill in the center of this because this is my Y turnout for up on top so I just have to put some more cork in the center of that and that will be right there so you can see how I have the uh, the ground going up to it I have some more strips right here that I just cut and I finished up them letting this dry I had the two outside pieces on there and then I put filled in on the center of this I'm not going to actuate the turn out from the center I'm going to do it from the side and so I put this piece over here I'm here in the hole right here okay and I got this right here this is the uh, right here is the uh, lift out section so I'm leaving this loose up on the top and I got this going all the way back here and I got all this filled in over here so I think I'm about ready and we'll take a look at it from this side right here you can see the tracks going all the way back through the valley and it'll disappear into the back okay so that looks pretty good right there this is what it looks like with the access panel back in and I think I did a pretty good job right there all I have to do is trim off the top of those uh, pieces of cardboard and would be good to go on that I'm about to apply the plaster cloth and I got the area ready Debbie was kind enough to allow me to use some of her towels and an 8 inch baking pan for this job now this baking pan has been used quite a bit in fact there's some scratches on the bottom that got all rusted out but we're not going to worry about that you can use a plastic one or anything like that piece of Tupperware or whatever in this project I'm going to use this right here it's called Paris craft and it's about half the length of uh, what you normally get like what the woodland scenic stuff and I got this at AC more and another thing that I have is a pair of scissors these are nice little scissors here what I do is I try to cover up what I'm not going to be applying the plaster cloth to but giving me enough space to work on the area with the plaster cloth okay here we go here's the plaster cloth now I've seen modelers that put on the gloves so they don't get their hands dirty I'm not like that I used to get my hands greasy and dirty all the time for about 40 years so it doesn't bother me to get this stuff on my hands right here is a nice good length to work with I got this at AC Moore but they also have this at Michaels and Joanne Fabrics but they have the wide longer ones but you have to be careful because one time I got this stuff that was not the same consistency of this you could see that this one has some big holes in it but I at one time got some stuff that looked like cheesecloth and it was very hard to work with it was like on a smooth surface that I actually used it on but what I normally do is I cut a bunch of pieces I figure out you know just take a random number maybe 10 or 12 of them and sometimes I'll cut them a little bit uh, wider than the other ones and if I if I was using the longer ones some I would cut a bunch of long ones and then I'd cut some in half also to get them like this right here but I just set these off to the side and I take this and put that off to the side while I'm working on this and I'm not going to show you the whole process of me doing this whole area but you just take this and 
dip it in the water. And what I like to do is just take some of the water off it. And what it actually does when you do that, it actually fills in some of the holes in there too. So I'm going to start over here on this edge. Oops, that wasn't supposed to be there. Okay. I put it on and I try to fill in the rub it a little bit and what that does is fill in some of the holes. I'm going to be going over this with plaster of Paris also. But you don't have to do it at any specific uh, way of you know starting at the top or work your way down or start at the bottom whatever is easiest for you to do and I just try to keep it as smooth as I can because if I need any texture in it I'm going to get that texture when I put the plaster or plaster of Paris on there and while you're doing this it, it uh, works better if the surrounding area is wet so if you're working on some plaster cloth that's already dried up I would just go over it and just uh, brush it with a little bit of water before you put the new stuff on that way it tends to stick better now you notice on this one piece right there I I could probably take a uh, one of these and cut them in half to uh, make it fit a little bit better and I'll do that once I, once I do this piece right here. So I'll take a small piece and I'll put it like right there. So we'll go right there with that. And you'll notice that I don't have the tunnel portal right there. It usually sits right there. So what I'll, what I'll do with that is I'll get close to it. I'll clean my hands put the tunnel portal in place and then put the last piece there that goes up against the tunnel portal. Now here's one thing I wanted to show you. If you do want some longer pieces all you do is just take it like this and cut it like that and cut across it twice and then you have three long pieces like that. And I'm going to use that on this other side Here's a midway shot of the pro of the project. That side there and this side here. Since this right over here is a lift out, I put as much plaster cloth as I could, as far as I could reach anyway, up there so it will maintain the contour when I lift that piece out. Because I have to go back in there, stand in there, to finish the rest of this uh, plaster cloth right here. But this is what I have so far. I still have to put a little wall here. I have to dig in one of my totes. I have some extra walls like this that are already uh, weathered that I pulled out from another spot. But that's what we have so far. And here's a view from track level. And you can see I got a little bit right there, so I have to clean that up. But here's what we got so far. So not too much further to go. Well, that's about all we're going to do on this for right now. My back's hurting. You know, when you get my age, you can't reach very far for too long a time. So. I'm going to let that dry, let the, uh, let the contour dry up so I could lift out that section and then do the remaining part of the terrain. I hope you learned something. I sure did. And even though I had all the towels down, I still got drippings everywhere. I have to clean it up a little bit. Uh, some of the areas I'm not too worried about, but I got it on my little trestle over there. I got a couple of drips of the uh, plaster on there, so I'll have to scrape that off. But that's not too hard to get off. So, until the next time, we'll see ya.